welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. Sarah Marshall Boone, recognized for improvements to the ironing board. Sarah Marshall Boone was one of the first African-American women patent holders and is recognized for the improvements she made to the ironing board in 1892. Along with her three siblings, she was born into slavery in North Carolina and prevented from formal education. Thus, she could not read most of her adult life. Sarah would marry James Boone, a brick mason, and they would settle in New Haven with their eight children where she made a living as a dressmaker. She would eventually embark on entrepreneurship by opening a dress shop. Since she was surrounded by stiff competition, she was looking for a way to stand out and make her operation more efficient. She motivated Boone to redesign the ironing board that she was using to make the job of ironing her customers' clothing easier and faster. Her version was a narrow, curved, wooden one that was rotatable, allowing it to fit the left and right side of a shirt sleeve. Boone's modification of the ironing board was also padded and collapsible. In her patent application, Sarah Boone described that she wanted to produce a cheap, simple, convenient, and highly effective device, particularly adapted to be used in ironing the sleeves and bodies of ladies' garments. Frederick Jones, recognized for his invention of the air conditioner for trucks and vehicles. After a challenging childhood, Frederick Jones taught himself mechanical and electrical engineering without any formal education. He would serve in France in World War I as a mechanic, but upon his return, a local businessman named Joseph Numero would hire Jones as an electrical engineer in 1927. Jones was resolved to invent air conditioning for cars and trucks for both the benefit of passenger comfort as well as preventing food from spoiling. His brainstorming resulted in an automatic refrigeration unit that was compact and shockproof. Jones' mobile refrigeration technology revolutionized the distribution of food and other perishables, allowing food to be transported all over the country, all year round. His invention received a patent in 1942 and would help revolutionize America's grocery industry as well as America's eating habits, making fresh produce available anywhere. Jones and Numero would eventually incorporate a company together called Thermo King to mass produce his mobile refrigeration device. Thermo King would become an international corporation with over $1 billion in annual sales when it was acquired by the Ingersoll Rand Company in 1997. For all of his talent and ingenuity, Frederick Jones would go on to earn over 60 patents, and many of his inventions made real improvements to the life and leisure that we enjoy even today. John A. Burr, recognized for his improvement to the rotary lawnmower. John Burr was born in Maryland in 1848. His parents were enslaved and were later freed, but he himself was not able to escape manual labor since he worked as a field hand during his teenage years, but his talent did not go unrecognized. Wealthy black activists ensured he was able to take engineering classes at a private school and ultimately able to attend Harvard Business School. After he finished up at Harvard, he moved to Chicago in the 1870s where he put his mechanical skills to work making a living repairing and servicing farm equipment and other machines. Burr would begin working on the design of a rotary mower. In 1899, he would receive an official patent for his rotary mower, but Burr continued to patent improvements to his design, coming up with innovative ways for mulching clippings, sifting, and dispersing them. Today's mulching power mowers are part of his legacy, returning nutrients to the turf rather than backing them for compost or disposal, thus helping save labor and the environment. John A. Burr held over 30 U.S. patents for lawn care and agricultural inventions. Unlike many early African-American inventors who never saw their designs commercialized or never received benefits for their creations, Burr was able to enjoy the fruits of his success and actually received royalties. This provided him with the means to live a prosperous life as he traveled and lectured around the country. Michael C. Harvey, known for his improvements to the lantern. Lanterns have been used for centuries, but Michael C. Harvey, also known as M.C. Harvey, was an African-American inventor who improved upon it. In 1884, he received a patent in St. Louis, Missouri for improvements he made to the wick razors 
used in the oil lanterns. The wick absorbs the oil below it, and when the lantern is lit, the saturated wick would burn and give off light. Even though we cannot grant Harvey the title of the inventor of the lantern, we can credit him for making changes to it that would extend the lighting and dramatically improve human lives. Valerie Thomas, recognized for the invention of the illusion transmitter. Valerie Thomas is a scientist who began working at NASA as a data analyst in 1964. While there, she managed a project for NASA's image processing systems and oversaw the development of Landsat, which was the first satellite ever to send images from space. In 1977, Thomas began researching and experimenting on an illusion transmitter, which would essentially create the appearance of a 3D image. She patented it in 1980, and NASA still uses her invention to this day. The device produces optical illusion images via two concave mirrors. Unlike flat mirrors, which produce images that appear to be inside or behind the mirror, concave mirrors create images that appear to be real or in front of the mirror itself. Today, it is in use with some adaptations for surgery as well as the production of television and video screens. Charles B. Brooks Recognized for improvements to the street sweeper. Born in Virginia in 1865, Charles B. Brooks was living in Newark, New Jersey and working as a porter for the Pullman Palace Car Company. Brooks began to experiment with the existing street sweeper, confident that he would make the process less daunting and more cost effective. Unlike the street sweeper patented earlier, Brooks' version was the first self propelled sweeper that he patented in 1896. His design had revolving brushes attached to the front fender, and the brushes were interchangeable so that when snow fell, scrapers could be attached for snow removed. Later, Brooks also introduced a receiving pan, which collected the swept dirt, carried it along a belt, and dumped it into a receptacle. He also patented a dustproof collection bag for the street sweeper. Brooks' invention was met with initial success in 1885. Brooks received financial backing from two investors who provided funding for its production in Scranton, Pennsylvania. That sweeper was estimated to have a production price of about $2,000 each. Alice H. Parker, recognized for the invention of the central heating system. Alice H. Parker was a black inventor in the early 20th century, best known for patenting a central heating system that uses natural gas. Her invention played a key role in the development of the heating systems we have in our homes today. Little is known about Parker's life or upbringing, most likely because women, especially women of color at that time, were not documented sufficiently. However, she was born in 1895 in Morristown, New Jersey, and later attended classes at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Parker's idea for heating system came from being cold during New Jersey winters when fireplaces did not effectively heat an entire home. Parker's design was unique in that it used natural gas which saved time from chopping wood and increased safety measures without a fire burning all night. Granted, in 1919, Parker's patent was not the first for a gas furnace design, but it uniquely involved a multiple yet individually controlled burner system. Although her exact design was never implemented due to concerns with the regulation of heat flow, her system was an important precursor to the modern heating zone system and thermostats as well. Charles Oren Bailiff, recognized for invention of the shampoo headrest. C.O. Bailiff of Michigan patented the shampoo headrest. His invention would help support the weight of the head and lessen pressure on the neck during various hair care techniques. His invention relates to improvements in shampoo headrest attachments for barbers and other chairs, which enable the operator to conveniently and quickly perform the entire work on the head of a person. His invention would serve a valuable purpose at barbershops, beauty salons, and even dentist offices without subjecting clients to any inconvenience or discomfort. His design was also able to provide a suitable device that could be conveniently and readily attached to and detached from surgical, dental, or other chairs for neck support and comfortable headrest support. William A. Dietz, recognized for an invention of the boat. William A. Dietz was an African-American inventor born enslaved in Albany, New York. He patented a shoe that he called the shoe boot in 1867. His boot extension was made of leather and could be buttoned or laced around the lower leg. It was intended to be a woman's shoe, 
giving them something that was warmer and easier to get their feet into because the opening was placed at the back. Women could wear this shoe during different weather conditions and it proved especially helpful during raining conditions where you couldn't avoid stepping through puddles. His new shoe boot would cover a large part of their legs, which is essential in keeping you warm during cold weather. Osborne Dorsey, recognized for his invention of the doorknob. The first patent was given for a doorknob and an internal door latching mechanism in 1878 to an African-American inventor called Osborne Dorsey of Washington, DC. His invention provided improvements to door holding devices meant to secure a door and restrict the ability of its being forced open by the wind or person. Before Dorsey's invention, people would open and close their doors with latches or leather straps, but neither method was very effective. The door could only be opened when the key was turned in the lock. The lock and key option was generally too expensive for the average person to afford back then, but with Dorsey's doorknob, the average person could have a bit more ease and security.